welcome to my channel in this video we are going to be studying the projectile motion part one so we want to look at a body that undergoes projectile motion and to see the equations that govern such motion so it's important to look at a graph that describes a particle that undergoes projectile motion so the particle follows the body follows through this trajectory down to this point so it starts from here and ends here this is my y axis this is my x axis right so when the particle is initially launched it has initial velocity u and it is projected at an angle of theta so as the particle as the body moves through these parts we'll notice that at any point we can even get the horizontal component of the velocity, initial velocity, and the vertical component of the velocity which is represented as Vy and the horizontal Vx. So as the body gets towards this point, we we'll notice that the velocity, the vertical velocity ceases while only the horizontal velocity exists. So when it gets towards this point, the vertical velocity begins to appear but this time around it points downward while the horizontal velocity continue to move in this direction so um, to generate the equation governing this body we we'll first start with the component of this u in the x-axis and later we we'll look at the component of this velocity along the y-axis so we have the first equation which is giving us Vx equal to u cos theta. So if you notice, along these paths, if you check, this is my adjacent, and this is my hypotenuse. So adjacent all over hypotenuse will give me cos theta. So it will now be ux all over u cos theta. So if you make your Vx the subject formula, you have u cos theta. Okay, from this point, we can get the position along this direction from this equation and which is giving us dx dt equal to u cos theta if we send this one here using separable variable method we have dx u cos dt at this point if we integrate both sides we have our x which is equal to u t cos theta right so the two equations along the horizontal are the vx components and the x components we also have the velocity we can square it which will be used later in subsequent um, equations so we we'll move on to the y components for the y component we have vy the vertical velocity equal to u sine theta minus gt and the gt is because as the body moves upward the gravity acts on it which is gt so from here if we do the same thing here too we can get the y distance from the origin so we have the y dt equal to u sine theta minus gt if we send this one to this part we can integrate both sides and get our y that gives us um, this expression so if I integrate this part it brings in ut sin theta minus if we integrate this part it becomes half of gt squared and that is so this is the y the distance that's called distance from the origin at any point okay so we can also get the velocity components the square of the velocity and the vertical component vertical velocity in this form just square this one so the vy that we had in the previous slide but this one can also be represented as this because sometimes we might be we, we might need the vy squared but the time is not given so in that case what we usually do is to also represent it in this form so with that we can get our from this diagram at any point we might be interested in calculating the velocity at this point 
so we just resolve v squared plus vy squared plus vx squared all squared that will give us the velocity at this point if we are interested in calculating the velocity at this point it becomes this one squared plus this one squared all square root that will give us so that's giving us this so this velocity is the velocity at any point in this region we can also be asked to calculate the theta at that point, any point, and that will be giving us theta equal to arc tan vy all over vx. So let's see the next thing. To calculate the maximum height reached, right? So let's consider the diagram. This is the maximum height reached, right? So the maximum height can be gotten from our normal y, the equation for y. But what we we'll notice is that at this point vy equal to zero so let's see what we have so this is a normal y at any point the y at this point is given by this but sometimes the t might not be given so it's important to find the value of y in terms of parameters that do not involve t so but we can recall that our vy is zero at this height maximum height which is given by this so if we equate this one to this because this one comes to the side we equate we can make our t the subject formula and substitute back into this equation and this is what we have okay then followed by making t the subject formula but mind you this t here is the time taking to get to this maximum height this t here because at that time py is equal to zero so we can make t equal to what this is the time taken to get to this point so let's substitute this back into this now let's see what we have we have our u then our t is this which is here then sine theta minus half of g t squared which is this so if we resolve this one becomes u squared sine theta g sine squared theta this and that gives us y equal to this expression and then for result this is exactly equal to this but the difference is just this half and one so one minus half will give us half so we now have u square sine squared it's turned over 2g so this is a maximum height traveled the expression for the maximum height alternatively we can resolve it in this form remember that we also derive there we also had this expression in the previous slide so at the maximum height y squared is equal to zero so in that case we we'll have this and if we make our y so your formula this is what we have finally this and you can see this expression matches this so this is the expression for the maximum height travel reached right <coughs> so let's look at the next thing which is the horizontal range so to calculate the maximum range traveled, we start with our equation of x. So this is a horizontal range traveled, this part. And we already have expression for x, which is given as x equal to ut cos theta. We would have loved to use this one to get our range, but most times t is usually not given. So we have to find a way of replacing this t. And to replace it, we'll go back to this particular diagram where we have the launched body moves from this point to this side. And we notice that once it gets to this part, the final displacement, the y along the y is always equal to zero. So the displacement along the vertical is always equal to zero as long as it starts from here and ends here. So we have y equal to this expression. And this displacement, when it completes the part, is always equal to zero. So we have zero equal to this. So if we make our t the subject formula, we we'll have this expression. Then finally this. Now take note that this your t here is the time taken to move from this point to this point, which is got from it. Right? Is the time total time taken to travel from this point to this point? So for me, we can substitute back into this one, and this is what we have. X, U, T is equal to what? 
So we use sin theta followed by g. These are cos theta, and we have this. So if we rearrange, we have u squared 2 cos theta. But also note that 2 cos theta sin theta is also known as sin 2 theta. So that gives us this one. So this is our range for the projectile motion. Okay, so if we also study this particle, we will notice that we can get some other equations from it. So one of the equations is the fact that we've established x equal to ut cos theta. We've also established y equal to ut sin theta minus g, which is the x component and y component. We might be interested in determining the height at any point, not necessarily at the, man at the middle. The height at any point can be here, it can be here. And also the corresponding distance from the origin here to this point. So to do that, we can use these two equations to calculate at any point and any height. But the problem of using these two equations is that t is usually not given. So let's find a way of eliminating t and see if we can determine the value of y and x at any point. <coughs> So what we we'll do is make t the survey formula from here and substitute in here. So if we make t the survey formula, we have x equal x all over u cos theta equal to t. So if we substitute y um, t as x all over u cos t into here, t will now become x all over u cos t theta. So our u will cancel u, which makes it x than theta minus, if we substitute this one here, we have half of g, right, x squared all over cos squared theta. So that gives us this expression. This expression is a final expression or the usual expression that is used to determine the y distance from the ground at any point. So let's say we're interested in determining this value y. If we know the x, the horizontal range, the theta is given, the initial velocity is given, then we can calculate this y. It could be here, it could be here, it could be anywhere. Sometimes we might be given y and we have, and we'll be asked to calculate x. That's the corresponding x for this particular y. We'll make y the summary from uh, we'll make x the summary from and calculate our y. So that's it. I hope that you enjoy this um, lecture. Hopefully, the part two will solve some technical problem using all these formulas. Thank you for listening. Please like, share, and subscribe to this channel.